we are making scones today. But before we get started, I want to go over just a few things that are important. And then maybe I can head off some questions that way. The first thing is, is that if you want to make these gluten-free, you totally can. Just go ahead and choose a baking mix like, like this one. So where it's like a measure for measure, gluten-free baking mix works awesome, okay? No one can ever tell the difference in my house if I'm using this or um, regular flour, all right? If you wanna make it dairy-free, go ahead and use any of like your dairy-free butter substitutes. And if you wanna use coconut oil, you, you can. Just make sure that coconut oil is pretty cold, okay? So you don't want it melted or really soft. So you can measure out the amount of coconut oil that'd be equivalent to the one stick of butter, okay, so a half cup. And then go ahead and throw it in your fridge so it's nice and cold for when you use it. Same with the milk. If you wanna do dairy-free milk, that all works too. I'm gonna show you guys how to make kind of like a cheat buttermilk using white vinegar, or if you wanna use lemon juice, you can do that as well. So we will all do that. You don't have to use buttermilk at all. It does just add a lot of good flavor to the scone. All right, preheat your oven to 415 degrees. It's a pretty hot oven. I'm gonna grab my butter from the fridge and we're gonna get started on some scones. So step one is going to be cutting up our butter. Open up your butter, grab a knife. If you have um, a dough cutter, these work great. All I do to cut my butter up is I always go down the long way once, okay, cut in half, and then I'm just gonna go through and cut it into small pieces, all on the wrapper. Once you cut your butter up, go ahead and just cut it into a couple of bit smaller pieces. So kind of go through and chop it a few more times, okay? Then you can go ahead and just pop this in your freezer or your fridge to keep it cold, unless if your house is pretty cold, like put on a sweater type house, and then you'd probably be fine to leave it out. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave mine out because it is freezing down here in the cooking kitchen. Next up, our buttermilk. If you don't want to do buttermilk, don't worry. You don't have to do it, totally optional. For the amount of milk use, there is a range. The range exists because depending on how you measure your flour and all the other things you add to your scones, you might need more or less milk. So I'm going to not want to waste my milk. So I'm going to only prep a half cup of buttermilk. If I need more milk because my scone is too dry, I'm just going to add regular milk. All right, half cup. Now, to make a buttermilk, you can get lemon juice, either from a bottle or if you're an overachiever, fresh from a lemon, or you can do it like I do, which is get white vinegar. So I'm going to take my white vinegar and I'm just gonna do a little glug in there. And I'm this lazy, guys, I don't even want to dirty a spoon. So all I'm gonna do is just take my thing, I'm just gonna swirl it around, and I'm gonna set this aside. Hopefully, when we come back to it, it will be nice and chunky, chunky milk the most disgusting thing to picture, but absolutely delicious. Yes. All right, dry ingredients, you start with a bowl. All right, flour, again, gluten-free flour, use it. Make sure it is a measure for measure mix. Take a spoon and you are going to spoon your flour into your measuring cup. How much flour? Let me double check two and three fourths cup of flour. If you're measuring out your flour, I use 125 grams as my measurement for one cup of flour. So we're gonna have two one cup measuring cups. One, level off into your bowl. And then find the littlest baby measuring cup, the one fourth. And you're gonna do that three times. Or if your one cup measuring cup has different measurements marked down on it, you can also try to do it that way. It will not be as accurate though. I'm gonna just go ahead and do my one fourth three times. All right, we got a flour in here guys. And then we're gonna add our baking soda or baking powder, baking powder. All right, one tablespoon. So 
Get your biggest measuring spoon. One tablespoon, this is a teaspoon. Use the big one, all right? You're going to go ahead and fill it up, scrape it out even, and put that in there. So we got baking powder in here. Now we need to do salt, one teaspoon of salt, all right? And then add it to your bowl. In our bowl, guys, we have flour, we have salt, we have baking powder. Very exciting. Now we need to add our sugar. If you are using, if you're gonna make a sweet scone, you're gonna put one third cup of sugar. If you're making a savory scone, so a not sweet scone, you're gonna reduce that to one tablespoon, okay? I am making sweet scones today. I'm making a cranberry lemon white chocolate scone. So I'm gonna do one third cup. If you want to substitute in um, another type of sugar, like a stevia or any kind of like natural sugar-free, uh sugar substitute you can totally do that it works great before we do anything else if you are adding any herbs or spices or cinnamon or anything dry if you're adding cocoa powder to make chocolate scones they all go into your dry ingredients if you're going to use some fresh fruit like blueberries or strawberries or raspberries um you can add them to your dry ingredients too however what i recommend doing is you take like your fresh blueberries and you toss them in some flour first. If you do that, that helps them from all sinking to the bottom. The only thing not going in here flavor-wise is anything liquid, like an extract, or um, if you are adding in some like, like jelly or like a raspberry jelly to flavor it, all those would go in your liquid stuff. The same with honey or anything like that. Uh, so I'm gonna be adding in some dried cranberries. I'm gonna add in just about like a half cup of dried cranberries. Oh, it's on tight. And then I'm gonna add in white chocolate chips as well. So mix this in, so mix it all in. But when you kind of, if you were to like hold this up in your hand, you wanna make sure that there is more, more flour than, than the good added stuff. We're adding our butter next, okay? So we're working that butter in there. So go ahead and grab your butter from the freezer or the fridge. All right, so we are just working with our hands and breaking that butter into little pieces. Little kind of like pea size pieces. All right, so once you've worked in your butter, you are welcome to throw this entire bowl into the fridge to keep it nice and cold, or you can leave it out if you work pretty fast. Up. You can just go ahead and get a smaller bowl for your liquid ingredients. The only liquid ingredients we have guys are our extracts, our eggs, and our milk. Unless if you are adding in some jelly or um, like a lemon curd um, to make like lemon, oh my gosh, that's so good, like a lemon curd scone um, or anything again, liquid go in here. You don't need a big bowl. I'm going to start with my eggs. We always have with us Bob and Susie, they've been hanging out for the last couple of years here. Ready? Gets a little dark, guys. I'm always wearing that. You're going to crack the egg right above the mouth, okay? Your thumb's going to go in and pull down, and your fingers are going to pull up if it goes as planned, okay? So you end up with a talking egg shell puppet. So again, we'll show on Bob. We are going to crack Bob right above the mouth, and our thumb's going to go pull down while our fingers pull up, and out comes Bob Green. All right, one hand of egg crack. All right, two eggs are in there. Go ahead and take either a whisk or a fork, and you're gonna beat those eggs. Beating our eggs simply means we don't wanna see the separation of the egg whites and the egg yolks. Okay, doesn't take long at all. Then go ahead, and if you made your buttermilk, Grab that and add in your half cup of buttermilk. Okay, it should be chunky. Look at those chunks. Mmm, so yummy. All right, and mix that together. I'm gonna now add my extract. Okay, so I have a lemon emulsion right here, but I'm still gonna add in some vanilla. I will almost always add in vanilla 
even if I'm doing another flavor. So I'm adding in about a teaspoon of lemon and a teaspoon of vanilla, and I'm mixing that in. If you're gonna add in like a strawberry jelly or a lemon curd, um, go ahead and add in, hmm, I'd say like a, like a good like heaping like tablespoon and that'll give you some nice good flavor to that. All right, so liquid, dry, time to combine. So I'm gonna go ahead and pour my liquid into my bowl and I'm gonna start mixing that. You want a nice soft dough. It doesn't need to be super, super sticky. If your dough ends up being crazy sticky, like super goopy monster snot sticky, okay? Then go ahead and add a little bit more flour. You can add up to about a fourth cup more flour as my go-to rule without having to worry about adjusting any of the other ingredients. If your dough is too dry and it's crumbly and you've like done everything you can, and you're like, this is not forming a dough, Becky, add more milk. That's why we have that extra milk, right? So go ahead and just add in a little splash of milk at a time until your dough comes together. Easy. This can have some shagginess to it, but this is what I'm looking for consistency wise. All right, so I have my scone dough now onto a piece of parchment. Now, one final step, and then we're baking our scones and eating them, okay? is how do you want to shape it? You could use like different, like larger cookie cutters and you can, you can actually see it. Uh, press down your dough a bit, flour the heck out of your cookie cutter so they don't stick as much. And you could cut out your stone shape, okay? Or you can just use your hands to form your stones. Right, you can make small ones, thick ones, big ones. You can make thinner ones. Or let's say you don't wanna go through the work of forming individual scones. I don't blame you, all right? So to get out of extra work, all you have to do is flatten your dough into a disc, like shape, a circle. All right. We're baking these. How long are we baking these for, guys? It kind of depends, again, on the thickness and size. But you're gonna be doing it probably for at least 20 minutes, all right? You're looking for them to turn golden brown. Go ahead and give them a little bit of space if you don't want them touching. Just think about the same as you would like chocolate chip cookies. All right, it's kind of a safe, easy thing to go on that, right? I'm gonna pop these in the oven. And while you guys continue to do that, I will go ahead and show you real quick how to make an easy glaze for your scone. Again, pop these in the oven. All right, so our glaze. To make a glaze, bowl, powdered sugar, and then either water or cream or milk or almond milk, soy milk, all the milks, right? In here, I am putting one cup of powdered sugar. And the reason being is that that is always gonna be, a lot of times, my starting amount for a glaze. I'm gonna go ahead and put my flavor. I'm gonna put a little bit of vanilla extract. And I'm gonna go ahead and put a little bit of that lemon. I wanna pull out that lemon again too. Okay. And then you're gonna use a spoon, a fork, a whisk, whatever you have on hand. And you're gonna mix that together. And then you're gonna go ahead and start slowly pouring in just a little bit of milk like a tablespoon at a time or water or cream and mixing it together. Okay, so the thickness of your glaze. If you want a nice thin glaze, you're gonna pour it, uh, milk in until when you have some drip off your spatula or your fork, it just dissolves right back in. This type of glaze is gonna be nice and thin. It's gonna be perfect for me to just kind of drizzle on top. If you want a thicker glaze, more like a frosting, then add in less milk or you can add in more powdered sugar and thicken it up. If it needs more flavor, add more flavor. If it's too sweet, add a pinch of salt. See what happens. You probably like it. Um, 
and mess around with it. You can add food coloring to it. You could, again, have added in some jelly or a lemon curd or caramel sauce, depending on the type of scone you're making. If you're doing um, a chocolate glaze, add some cocoa powder. How much? Just start with like a small spoonful and mix that in. And again, you're going to be in charge of how you like the taste. If you're doing a savory scone, you probably don't need to do a glaze. And you can store these scones, guys, in like a Tupperware or a Ziploc bag on your counter for a good couple of days. I don't think they're going to last that long. You can also store them in your freezer, no problem. I love having a bunch of scones in my freezer. I just will pull them out either the night before and put them in the fridge, or I'll pop them in the microwave to defrost them or put them in the toaster oven on like warm. Now, let's see you have leftover buttermilk, okay? What do you do with that? Couple options, um, use it in pancakes, um, like buttermilk pancakes, I mean, do we ever like, you can never have too much of that. Uh, waffles, do you use for that? Or make another batch of scones up. Guys, I really hope like, like, I don't know where everyone's baking from and how many people are on Zoom versus on Facebook watching. Sometimes we've had a few thousand people, guys, joining live, and that's pretty special. We have people across the world. So, like, I, I thank you so much for joining in. I have so much fun. Like, I, I get that I'm offering this for free, but, like, this is for me, too. I have so much fun with you guys. It's really nice to feel connected with people during this time. And so, please, please, please continue to share these classes. Message me with questions. I will ask, answer them as quickly as I can. Thanks, guys. See you next week. Thank you. Thanks, Becky. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.